Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here The voice of hardcore boxing Right, straight in, balls deep, no messing about <laughs> Tony Bell you, what, what, what is he coming out with? What is he coming out with Tony Bell you? I don't want to make this video about Tony Bellew, but sometimes he says things and he riles me up. Let's back up a little bit, shall we? Before we talk about Anthony Bellew, the disappearing man. Right. You all do know that Jamie McDonnell and Gavin McDonnell are not working with Dave Colwell no more. You all know that, don't you? Right. So it looks like the matchroom dream's over for them now, doesn't it? They're on the outside looking in. Jamie McDonnell has had all them world title fights. He made Dave Colwell a lot of money. Now, Jamie McDonnell, a lot of people don't know this, but Jamie McDonnell were close to death before he thought that. I, I, I know you or something, I know you. Before he thought, I know you, he knows him now, doesn't he? Before Jamie McDonnell fought, I know you. Leading up to it, and even when he had them couple of fights in Monaco, he were really, really struggling at the weight, and Colwell knew this, Bellew knew this. They all knew, but Jamie felt that he had all his advantages would be took away if he moved up in weight. A fight I knows. Now, when he eventually did get in that ring, he got levered, didn't he, but... What's happened to him? I'll tell you what's happened to him. Colwell dropped them both, hasn't he? He's not training them now. He don't think they've got it anymore. Steffi Bull's left to pick up the pieces, isn't he? I, st I told Steffi Bull a few years ago, you need to be making your case to train Jamie. This is when me and Steffi were close mates. You need to train him, don't you? Why is he training him? Dave Uller trained him, Dave Uller. And then all of a sudden, just because he won't want to get on a plane, Colwell slipped in. They had to slip Colwell in, didn't they? He's the link to Eddie Hearn. And then, of course, once that happens, the rest follow, don't they? They all go, Gavin's going to go him. They're close, aren't they? They can both fight, can't they, McDonald's? Don't get me wrong. Jamie McDonald is a masterful boxer. I mean, let me just say this. He should have stepped up a long time ago. Now, Jamie McDonald's two year older than Josh Whale. What do you think would happen if Jamie fought Josh now at featherweight? I mean, he'd get smashed to bits, wouldn't he? Gavin would get smashed to bits. Ga Josh Whale would break both of them down and smash them to bits. But the point I'm trying to make is this. Get Jamie McDonald's on the outside looking in. Tony Bellew isn't, is he? He's on the inside, isn't he? He's all comfortable with Sky now. How's he done that, though? How can a man like Jamie McDonnell, with a CV that he has got, and look who he's beat, <laughs> God, he beat more world champions than Tony Bellew, he beat more world champions than Chris Eubank, than both Chris Eubanks, senior and junior, Jamie McDonnell's got more world champion wins than them, so what does that make Jamie McDonnell? It makes him a class act, doesn't it? But, what about the people around him? What about the people around him? Dave Caldwell. He's had a good whack out at job, hasn't he? He didn't have him from the beginning. Jamie McDonald turned up at Dennis Hobson's office on a recommendation from Pete Bell, who used to be my PO in prison. He went gym screw, Pete Bell. He's somebody that I'm in touch with today, if you check on my Facebook. And that he's coming, he's coming as my guest to uh, Josh Wales fight in Barnsley in February, and he's glad that I've obviously turned my life around. He said it, it means more to him than all years of service that he had. Now, Jamie McDonald's on the outside now, looking in. He's a, he's at that stage in his life where, when he rings Eddie Hearn, he's on mute. But there were a time when Jamie McDonnell rung Eddie Hearn and he picked up straight away. But he's not needed now, is he? Now, Bellew, 
he can't let it go. He wanted to disappear, didn't he? But he can't, can he? There's something inside him that has to make it about Tony Bellew. So every fight that Tony Bellew goes to, and this video is mainly about Tony Bellew, getting into the mind of Tony Bellew. Because Tony Bellew caused me a lot of problems. He caused me a lot of problems a while back. I'm not going to go mega into it. And George Groves caused me some problems as well. Big problems. I won't say anything about George Groves. And I won't get no more problems, will I? But let me tell you this. Tony Bellew. We know what Tony Bellew said to Dennis Hobson, don't we, Tony? When you're wrong, we know how you got Dennis's number and we know what you said, don't we, Tony? But you've just come out with a statement there, Tony. You're more or less hammering Thomas Hauser, one of the most respected and good guys in boxing. Hammering Thomas Hauser, who's well respected. And he was right, there was stuff found in Dillian White's sample. And that's all he said. Now, I'm going to play you the video later when I get in from Terry Chapman Dharma. It's only a short bit about Dillian's situation and he got it right. And people in the industry agree with Terry, but they're not going to come out and say it. Now, I'm not bothered Dillian White coming out saying F-U-C-K to all the haters. Look, I'm not a hater. Haters are people that hide behind a keyboard. I'm saying I want comfortable with Dillian White passing that. I told Dillian White in a video, if you don't want to reply to me, so be it. Look, Dillian White's a two -year, he's done a two-year drug ban, hasn't he? So, and there's an issue with another thing. Nobody hung him because nobody knew the facts, but we all said, where's the B sample? And I'm still saying now, what happened to that B sample? Me, Russ Hartley, I'm saying it. Where's the B sample? What happened to it? Now, Tony Bellew, where you slipped up there, Tony, is this. Certain people are not around you and Coldwell at the moment, Tony. And there's a lot of Tweety Pies in South Yorkshire. Now, us round here, Tony, we all know what you said in front of people about Dillian White's B sample. So, Tony, please do not come out Please do not come out saying what you're saying. Dillian White's innocent and I stood by him from day one. No, you didn't, Tony. No, you did not. Oh, no. Now, I'm going to make a phone call later tonight, right? And I'm going to go through something with this certain person. And if I can get this person to say, Ross... He might want you to say his name and he might not. If I can, I'm going to expose you, Tony Bellew. And I'm going to come out with somebody who's famous, who you said it to. But there were two other people there as well. and But not all world champions. But let me tell you this, Tony. You know what you said about Dillian White. You know what you said. And you also know what you said about Dominic Ingle and Billy Joe Saunders' drug tests. Now, you can't help me, send Tony. A lot of people can't. I can't sometimes. What's right is right. Now, what's wrong is wrong. And this isn't a case of black or white, Tony. You know what you said. Now, Dillian White, I think he's been made a scapegoat here. But you've got to understand this. Dillian White's a four-time pay-per-view guy. He's not been in a European title fight yet. But... He has got millions. Eddie earn has got millions. Take Joshua away. Dillian White's only other pay-per-view guy they've got. And he's got to be in right fight for that as well. Because they can't pass another Oscar Rivers off job off on us, can they? Fans are not going to put up with it. Because Dillian don't, don't do that many numbers. But him and Chisora, that'll do numbers. So... But if Dillian White can get millions and not fight Wilder, good luck to him. But now he's clear, he's got to fight Wilder, and he's got to suit WBC and get his manager slot back. But the point I'm trying to make, Tony, is this. If you're aiming anything at me, or any of my chums in hardcore boxing, or any of the podcasts, name us. 
Namers. My videos are out there. I don't delete anything. My video, I've deleted one video in all this time. One video. One video out of 600 and odd. Alright. Well, let me tell you this. Tony Bell, you, if you've got a problem with my channel, come out and say it. Come out and say it. Oh, come on, channel. When nobody gave a shit about Tony Bell, you, he were on Boxing Asylum. When he were getting knocked about as a light heavyweight, he were on Boxing Asylum. They all start off on podcasts, and then they get a bit of a profile, then they don't want to go on that podcast. Dave Allen were, on, were the same. Nobody knew who we were. He were on Boxing Asylum a few times, weren't you, Dave? You know you were, Dave. And then they get in with Eddie and then they think they don't need it. Then they want to make a comeback and they want to start doing their own podcast, but they realise it's harder than what you think. Point I'm trying to make is this. Tony Bell, you, you know. You know. You know, Tony, what you said about Dillian White. You said it in front of people. Nah. Get my number off. Same person you got Dennis's number off, Tony. And give me a ring. And I'll tell you who were there when you said it. And I'll tell you how I know. Because I ain't bothered. I ain't having you coming out there, Tony, making out that you're an angel and that all of a sudden you've got Dillian White's back. Uh-uh. There's a lot of people that hang around Dillian White and his brother. You've got six foot five guy and six foot eight guy. Dillian White's 20 stone plus in when he's not fighting. Other one must be 23, Clem. They're big lumps, aren't they? Walking about, giving it the old Black Panther. The big lumps, the big lads, and they probably have a tear up with you. So nobody dare say a word. They're all scared to death. Right, there. Eh? So I don't know them, so I can't comment. I know Dillian White can fight, though, and I know other ones. A man of, uh, man of mystery. <laughs> Austin Powers. <laughs> oh, who is it? What part is he playing this week? Oh, it's Wesley Snipes this week, isn't it? Luther Vandross last week, Black Panther week before, this week is Wesley Snipes. Next week, next week he might be Danny DeVito. I don't know, but he's an interesting character. And boxing needs characters. That's what boxing needs. But what we don't need is Tony Bellew going on, jumping up and down like a little boy because Joshua won. And now saying he's best in the world and it's a masterclass and... Barry McGuigan saying it's he will like Ali. Barry, Barry, please. You must be in a tricky situation at the moment, Barry, to be coming out with that. You must be. And I love Barry McGuigan. And we get on all right, but Barry, please, don't be coming out with any of that Ali stuff. It's amazing, isn't it? People who get it, get the half of the foot in the door and they start working with matchroom. All of a sudden, they start wanting to agree with everything that comes out of them. And that's how you end up on helmets at month. We've had votes today in loads of votes in for Barry McGuigan. Loads of votes. Like I got all them votes in for Peter Fury because he said that, didn't he, about John Ryder and Callum Smith. Would Peter have said that if he weren't working with Eddie? I don't know, but... He won... It wasn't a wide, wide, wide robbery, was it? But it was still a robbery. I had John Ryder winning. But we're going off course here. Point I'm trying to make is this. Tony Bell, you, you should be embarrassed with what you said. You should really be embarrassed, Tony, because we know that, no, you weren't going around saying you've got Gillian White's back. You were going around saying he's a two-time cheat and he's on pay-per-view. And he's not even had a European title fight. And then you were going on about your situation. Well, your situation is this, Tony. British, Commonwealth, European and a world champion. You never beat a champion, though. Vacant, 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 vacant. That means bought by a promoter, doesn't it? Nine times out of ten. And then we've got the world champions that you beat. Cleverly, you dragged him up £25. Davy Day held together by Celotate twice. So, Tony Bellew's career, technically, yeah, he did okay, but he overperformed, didn't he? Because he worked the system. 
like he's working the system now as a pundit is one week is that way one week is that way one week is like a grass next week is a villain week after is a gangster week after that is an informant is one or other isn't it is whichever way it wind blows tony bellew looks after tony bellew but this is boxing isn't it this is boxing people say to me somebody very close to me i'm not going to say his name because it's getting a bit boring but he says to me i wish you'd just pull rein it in a little bit with your channel that's because people keep sending him well I might as well say it's dennis isn't it people keep sending him emails and text messages and whatever and having a little pop saying yeah we like russ and all that but you know he's a bit out there and he's a bit you know close at knuckle and does it affect you dennis down line look they're doing it to cause ripples aren't they right but dennis don't hang his mates out does he how can somebody say that to dennis how can somebody dictate to dennis a man who's got millions like him you can't dictate to these people can you who the pals are going to be you know steffi bull can go around saying oh why don't Dennis get rid of Russ? He ain't gonna do, is he? Because I'm a character and I'm loyal. And I don't need no off him. Dennis has people around him, but nine times out of ten they need him, don't they? I don't need him, do I? I can hang with him, can't I? My mates will all testify to that. Terry Rico. I can go out of the country with Dennis and pay my own fights and stuff like that, can't I? And I've got my own car and that. I don't need stuff off him, do I? A lot of people around him, they need stuff off him, don't they? They need him. I don't, do I? Do you know what I mean? I'm fortunate. Do you know what I mean? I'm very fortunate that every now and then I can say, do you know what? No. I'm not happy with that, then. Or, you know, and I won't do this again. I have said some things in drink and when I've been drunk and I've let rip and said stuff like F you and fuck you, you C-U-N-T and stuff like that and regretted it, but I'm passionate, aren't I? Sometimes I like to create a bit of controversy on the channel, but it ain't note that I'm not going to say to somebody's face. It's like somebody says to me, what are you going to do if you go to a show and, uh, and Wesley Snipes turns up? Well, if Big Wes turns up, you know, jets in on his private jet after stopping people uh, open door in midair, I don't know. What are you going to do if you see him as so... Pokey, have you said that I, I, I'm not Dillian White's brother? I'll say, well, you're not, are you? And he's like, I, I'm, I'm his brother. I'm his bro. I say, OK, then show me proof. That's it. Show me some proof. Show me your driving licence. Show me your birth certificate. Put a birth certificate on the internet. Let's see a birth certificate, and let's see Dillian's birth certificate, and let's see what parents are on both. It's very easy to do. You go into a, a place, you pay £5. I can go in now with a camera and say, can I have a birth certificate with this person, and I give it, and I'll get Dillian White. I might even do it on channel. I might go in and pay the 10 quid and get both birth certificates because you don't need ID to do that and I'll show you. You can even do it online. I'll show you. pair of them are not related. pair of them. I will show you that. So why not just say he's my close mate and I trust him and we're like brothers. That's all you've got to say. It's a bit like Fury with the, uh, the, the 9 million to charity. Once you tell a lie, you've got to tell another you got to keep it going, haven't you? Or you can shut it off straight away and say, I don't want to talk about it. Fury did that with charity thing, nipped it in bud. And um, trust me, they all know not to ask that now. Because they all want to get the views. If you want to get... Look, if you'll get, if you get half a million views with a Tyson Fury interview, you're going to get 500 quid. If you're on Premier Ads, you're going to get 700 quid. So if you've got a chance of earning 700 quid with a Tyson Fury interview, right, are you going to ask what you should be asking? No. If you're sitting down with Eddie Earn and you're a small YouTube channel, you need Eddie Earn to survive. I don't. I'm working on my third billboard. Oh, I'm going to humiliate Eddie. Oh, you know that, don't you? I'm going to humiliate him. So this is the point I'm trying to make now. So it don't really matter to me. But these young kids who I admire and they're my peers. And I love Coogan. Love him to bits, man. 
but I just don't think he goes about his business right. I think he's lost touch with reality because he's got this great life with money and material things and he don't want to lose that now. And he's also got that, got a bit of, he's a bit famous now, Coogan, isn't he? I mean, Dennis loves him to bits, he loves him more than me. You've got to give it to him though, he's an hard working lad. But he's not going to ruin it for himself, is he? He's not going to ruin it for himself, is he? If you've got a chance to ask Eddie Yearn or Tyson Fury or Dillian White questions, you're not going to want to cheese them off because Dillian and Tyson just might grab you a bit and shake you about. If not, their entourages will do it at the drop of a hat to keep in with them. And this is how it works. This is why you have to be careful what you say. This is why I just say, come see me if you've got a problem. Come see me or phone me, we'll have you on the channel. Sending me emails and death threats and messages and stuff like that. Jesus. Best thing you can do when somebody threatens you is this, say, are you threatening me? They go, no, no, no. Then they hang up and they think you're taping them. But no, boxing's a very hard sport at the moment, but the media circus around it, it's, 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 they've got platforms to sell you anything. And these casuals are the people that it's all aimed at because they believe it, don't they? I mean... The, the, there's this guy, right, I call him No Hope because he's just ain't got no hope. He goes in this cafe that I go in and, I, I, and I go right and he goes, Joshua was the best! He's the best! He's got a Joshua t-shirt, a Joshua watch, uh, Joshua, well, Umbro bottoms. He's got Umbro trainers, Umbro everything, AJ boxing, is it BXNG? AJ BXNG, does that mean, does that mean boxing, but they're spelt wrong or something? They've got Owen, oh, I'm missing. He's got AJ Arts, which stay hungry on back or be humble or something. He's got all, all that, and uh, in defeat is power and strength, all these. He's got all that, and he's got, he's reading, he's always reading Ring Magazine. Every time he sees me, he goes, Joshua's the best! Uh, well, I, I saw him today, like, and I was like, how are you doing? I call him No Hope, because he's just got no hope in, in life. And uh, he goes to all Joshua fights. He didn't go Saudi, though. He's there with all Joshua, full, full Joshua at her. Full casual mode. And I'm like, I'm all right. And he's, like, talking about fighting. Oh, amazing, amazing! He's amazing! He's, he's straight away, he's like that. Oh, he beats Dillian White, he beats him, he beat him once, beat him again. Uh, he, he, he just, there's no, there's no talking to this, there's no talking to this man. He's the, t he's the type of guy that just loses. People like that lose their S-H-I-T. They lose it when they're around people like that. Now, I've took people to Dennis's shows, like Stig. Stig loses his S-H-I-T. When he's around Dennis, he, lo he, he loses his mind. I took Stig to an after party, first one I've ever took him to, and he's been to three. And he was sat with Robin Reed and Glenn McClory, and uh, and he, he, he was he were, he were, we are celebrities, he was saying to him, and I don't know what Glenn McClory thought of him, but he's likeable, Stig, but Stig loses his mind. He, he lost, Stig lost his S-H-I-T at that show. And this other guy loses his mind when you mention AJ. There's no talking to him. And, and I think when people like are giving you money, when people are giving you money and telling you to do a narrative, it's easy to like him, isn't it? For instance, I'm not gonna, I've, I've never been a millionaire, but there were, uh, you could say 2010, I probably, I, I, were on, I were on my way to probably a quarter of a, a getting a million quid. I were on my way. And you know, you have you have wrong turnings, don't you? And I think what happened with me, I had drug pro a serious drug problem, serious drug addiction problems. And it's like being a fat kid, innit, and working in a sweet shop. You ju you're just going to lose your mind, aren't you? You know, when I were a paper boy, I, 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 uh, I'd lose my mind looking at all that chocolate in the morning and I'd take a bit. Uh, if you're if you're involved in taking drugs and you're surrounded by them all the time, you're gonna take them, aren't you? It's like an alcoholic being a landlord. So, but going back to when 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 I uh, 2010, I suppose you could say were a purple patch for me. 
I uh, had people that around me that were, were would lose the mind of a uh, anything. You go out anywhere and you make a big fuss of you. They just lose their minds. And I think that. So could you imagine that on when when you, when you if you're giving somebody something, if you're picking tabs up right and taking your mates out, I can explain it. If you're picking tabs up in restaurants and you're taking your mates out. And, you, and you're taking people out that you've never met before, they're going to say nice things about you, they're going to be nice if they're giving you money. It's easy to like somebody when they're giving you, innit? If Eddie Hearn and Joshua are giving Tony Bellew the money that Tony, they're on, he's on at Sky. Now, Bellew's got more dates now, hasn't he? So he's obviously becoming a permanent fixture there. And I, I know what they get there, I know what they get. Uh, and he's on a good thing, it's free money, isn't it? They would do it for free to be out there, but all they're basically is saying is we're going to pay you thousands of pounds just to come and watch some boxing. That's it. All your meals are free and flight and travel and food and water and picked up and dropped off at home. Now, and you're getting all that and you're getting paid. It's like a, it's a dream job. And so you're not going to go against the narrative, are you? Like what Glenn McClory did and Jim Watt and people like that. You're going to say all them nice things, aren't you? Now, the point I'm trying to make here is this bias that we're seeing now is shocking. Tony Bellew's bias is shocking. And he can fight, but it's shocking and he's got to rein it in. But it, it can't. It's got worse now, hasn't it? It's got worse to such an extent that I think even, even Tony's got to look at him and think, do you know what, I'm becoming a bit embarrassing now, aren't I? I'm becoming a bit embarrassing. Uh, I know that Dennis don't allow it, we free sports, he won't have it. He won't have it. Obviously he's got uh, Glenn McCory. He's got Glenn McCory obviously on job, and Glenn McCory just sees it as he sees it, but but the point I'm trying to make is the point I'm trying to make is this it's got to end sooner or later all this bias because fans are sick of it and my emails I can't cope with them all I'm going to see a kid tomorrow who I haven't met yet it's from YouTube it's from the YouTube world he calls himself Zeb on the comment section I'm going to see Zeb tomorrow and he's, and hopefully moving forward he's going to be helping me down the line with channel I don't know what, I'm going to work out I'm going to work something out with him and uh, he's going to help me down the line so that's good isn't it might just be we're dealing with emails and stuff like that but I trust him and I haven't met him yet but I've had my eye on him for a couple of years now as regards his comments and what he says he don't always agree with me but but this sky bias thing is at a stage now where I think it's killing sport. It's killing sport. You can't tell me that that's a masterclass from Joshua because look who he was in with. Look who he was in with. Look who he fought. Who Andy Ruiz were talking about here. I mean, is this what it's come to where Joshua? wins against Andy Ruiz but don't go for it but yet it's a masterful performance I'm not having it I'm not having it at all looks like I'm not going to go swimming doesn't it I don't know shall I go swimming yeah I'll go next week See that's bad that isn't it? Bad father aren't I? Want to do these videos and not be swimming. I've bothered with that all night now. But yeah, uh, it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. It, uh, it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth it does that at weekend. Because I know I know that Tony Bellew
Oh, that's better. I've got a light at back. Look at that. I didn't know I had a light at back. 